I'm thinking... I think I'm going to go Howl Main. Howl Main is, has not been failing me yet. All right. Go full screen here. So, wow. That's a really inconvenient... <laughs> that's a really inconvenient place to put my, my face cam, but it is what it is. Um... Looks like they're just hard trick room. Yeah, looks like they're pretty much just hard trick room plus uh, heat trick. No, it's literally just all hard trick room. I really, really, really like my Gyarados in this game. As well as Manectric. I'm going to definitely bring him on top. And I think for my last slot, uh, Tokus seems pretty okay, but doesn't seem as reliable as another Pokemon would. Uh, I could go Entei, but I lose to quite a few things. That Garchomp's also kind of iffy. I, I'm some, it's, it's pretty much a tie between Tokus and Garchomp for me right now. Um, Entei's out of the question in this matchup. I'm thinking, I'm going to get a lot more mileage out of, out of Garchomp, I think. Actually, mm, let's go Kiss. No, no Chomp, Chomp. It, it's really hard to make that call, but it, it's just how it is, you know? Series 11 dead. Series 11 is pretty much not being played by a lot of people right now. The ladder itself is kind of empty. I can say that much. The ladder itself is kind of empty at the moment. Um, Let's see. So, there are a few annoying things that could happen here. Obviously, a fake out wouldn't be great. I'm going to go ahead and... I would like a waterfall off on this thing. He's more than likely just gonna go ahead. He's, he's more than likely just gonna go ahead and target down by Gyarados with a fake out because, you know, Gyarados is the only thing that can flinch something. So I'm just gonna take that fake out to the face and not really care. I'm pretty excited. If if they have a non Dynamax format for Series 12 or whatever we're using, I'll be happy. To be honest. Oh, that's gonna be the Gastro. Um, that's honestly fine, I think. Yeah, no, that's actually phenomenal, because he blocked me from giving a, bo uh, a boost. I'm gonna go into my Hitmon top, and I'm actually gonna Dragon Dance here, because I can do quite a bit of damage with Close Combat plus, um... Close Combat plus my Stinky Move. What is it called? Ice Fang. That's what we call it in this game, Stinky Move. All right. Gonna Dragon Dance here. I'm going to... Actually, do I just CC right now? I think I just CC right now. I don't really see a, a need to um to fake out this turn. Because if he goes for a Yawn, it's whatever. If he goes for a Scald, it's whatever. I mostly just want the damage. How does the BDSP meta feel? Very balanced, to be honest. BDSP meta is extremely balanced. The only thing that's kind of out of, out of whack is Scizor, but I'm making a video on that. In fact, I think I might drop the video tomorrow. It was a really good video. All right, yeah, that's definitely a range of Ice Fang plus uh, Close Combat, if not just the Close Combat outright. Goes for the Yawn. I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, The fact that they have Yawn tells me they definitely have Protect. So here I'm going to go for Ice Fang plus Faint. And if I'm lucky, I'll be able to pick this up. If they if they don't protect me, I'm gonna feel I'm gonna feel really dumb to be honest. <laughs> if they don't protect me, be really upset. But I'm pretty certain they protect here. They don't protect. I could have gotten this KO, which is really huge for winning this game. All right, let's see if I crit. Nope. Can I freeze? Nope. Okay, that sucks. I could have CC'd. All right, to be honest, Psychic is extremely rare to see on Bronzong right now, so I think I'm just going to double it with CC plus Ice Fang and hope that that does enough. It might. Um, it's going to be really close, but I could have just I could have just done it. And that's kind of disappointing. <laughs> oh, I really thought they'd protect there. All right, let's go for it again. I, I really have to get rid of this thing. And we saw how much the close combat did. I think after in this close combat, as long as they don't recover again, I should KO. And also, if I don't get burned, you know, on either of my Pokemon. If I do, I think it might just be game. All 
All right. Gyro Ball. Tank that. I definitely tank a Scald. It's going to be really close, though. Okay, I think I got rid of this thing. I think I got rid of this thing. It's going to be super close. That's Ice Fang range. 100%. That's got to be Ice Fang range. And if I get rid of this thing, I think I win. Come on. Nice. Okay. That's huge. And I still haven't gone to sleep. So I can actually pivot quite a bit. There's E Honda. What? That's a, that's a sick nickname. Is that Street Fighter, right? That's got to be Street Fighter. I always forget the names of every character ever in every game ever. Um, they should be faking out into my Hitmon top, if anything. So I can try to go for some rough skin damage plus burn, which would be huge. And then I still have double intimidate in the back. How's the stream looking so far, guys? It's been a while since I streamed. I honestly really missed it. I want to try to stream uh, a lot these next coming days. Uh, the only thing is I got a lot of my plate still, even though it's break. Uh, mainly just because I'm going on a big trip in a couple of days, and I need to get as many videos as I can done before then. All right, fake out into the... Fake out into the Garchomp, please. I can honestly see a fake out going into my Gyarados, but I think they're anticipating a switch, so. Ah, yeah, that's fine. That did a lot. But that's fine. I didn't really need Chomp to win. Okay. Um, We are two turns of Trick Room down. I'd like this double intimidate. Uh, I can go into Hitmontop here. Hitmontop's more important in terms of intimidate than it is for damage dealing right now. So this is a pretty good opportunity to uh, go to Hitmontop for the uh, Manectric slot since they're more likely going to Hypnosis into that. All right. The Gyro Ball, amazing. No Hypnosis this turn. I get Fake Out Pressure next turn as well. And if they go for a knockoff into my Gyarados, it doesn't do much. I don't live that, which is kind of annoying. I really thought I would. However, is that the end of the world, really? I mean, they're probably in range of Waterfall now. Alright, check this out. Check this out. This is my master gamer play. This turn, I believe this is the last turn in Trick Room. I'm going to go for a Howl and I'm going to go for a Protect. Because I think they're going to try to go for Hypnosis into my Gyarados. Or at least they should be, in my opinion. I'm also very physically defensive on my Minectric. I may, and that sounds weird to say, but you guys are going to see the uh, the showdown live where I explain the team in a couple of days. But uh, yeah, I'm very physically defensive on Minectric, so if they close combat, there's like a slight chance I live. Okay. It's only very slight, though. Oh yeah, baby! Here we go! <laughs> Give me my wiki berry. That is the thickest Manectric on Earth. I guarantee you, no one makes them thicker than Moxie Boosted. Watch this not be the last turn of Trick Room and I'm an idiot. It probably isn't, and I'm just really dumb, and I'm like actually the stupidest. Okay, yeah. That was like an instinctual, I think it's the last turn of Trick Room. Not like a, I know it's the last turn of Trick Room, to be honest. Um, how many Pokemon do they have again? 
or what we haven't seen their last pokemon is the issue and i'm kind of scared of that i really want to double into this thing with like thunderbolt plus waterfall and hope that that ko's but i really don't think it does all right they do have protect Oh, jeez. Can I flinch? Paralyze? Anything? If I get one flinch, I'll be so happy. Oh, no. Okay. Um. So my number one priority is going to be this Bronzong. If they put me to sleep again, I'm in trouble. And Chomp is... I'd rather lose Manectric than Chomp, to be honest. All right, don't land the hypnosis, please. Please, sir, do not land hypnosis. You already got one. You don't need two. You don't need two hypnosis, sir. Hypnosi. That's that's the plural hypnosis. You don't need two hypnosi, honestly. Right, they withdraw E Honda. Makes sense. Pretty base play. Pretty base play. There's the toaster. Um, don't. Okay, I asked nicely, but whatever. Now I genuinely hope I don't KO this thing. I genuinely hope I don't. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Um, what's nice about this is I actually have a decent chance to wake up. Because I, you know, I already burned a turn of sleep. So if I wait, if I get a first turn wake, that'd be amazing. I really need this. If I get this first turn wake, I'm pretty sure I just win. Because Hariyama's running protect fake out uh, in close combat, which means its last move is likely knock off. And he already knocked off, or we already used our Lumberry, so like we don't really care. Oh, let's go, let's go! Please wake up! Please wake up, sir! Please, Gyarados, please. I'm begging you here. I am actually begging you. It's embarrassing. This is an embarrassing amount of beggary. Is that a word? Beggary? I feel like that's a word. Um, anyways. Wasn't Garchomp a first turn sleep? I think he might have been. My play here would be Earthquake, right? I think. And waterfall into you. Please, Gart. Please. Just a crumb of awakeness. I don't want to lose to two blind hypnosises, but, you know, I definitely deserve it after the evasion stuff I've been pulling on the channel recently. And that heat wave actually did a ton, to be honest. They could also knock themselves out with Gyro Ball. Oh, okay. Uh, honestly, that's, that's kind of huge. In fact, I think I benefit more from that than I than I don't. Gyarados Festival. Yeah, so now my play is 100% Earthquake plus Waterfall, because if I do wake up, I just win. Protect here. Waterfall now. Because now... Yeah, if, if... If Garchomp wakes up and I get this Protect off, I pretty much win. Oh, jeez. This is stressful. Garchomp, please wake up. This is the first time I've ran Protect on Garchomp in this entire season, to be honest. I've usually run just like Swords Dance. Uh, so please pay off once. And he does not. He stays sleep. Garchomp stays sleep. Right, that's not KOing me. Oh, okay. Wait, we're in this. We're in this. I think that's the last turn of Trick Room. Okay. Okay. So that should be the last turn. Of, yeah, that's the last turn of Trick Room. Uh, I can win this. In fact, I don't think there's a way for them to win this. Because I literally always just go for Earthquake plus Waterfall into the um, into the Bronzong and they can't do anything about it. Because I, I think I burned, two, I, I burned three turns of sleep on my Garchomp. I'm guaranteed to wake up. Unless I miscounted. But I've been pretty accurate on my counting recently. 
One, two, seven. Yeah, I still got it. I still got it. You, all, you already know I still got it. Yeah, Gyarados literally carrying my Garchomp right now. Yeah, because I'm at plus one on my on my Gyarados. Regardless of what they go for fake out on, they, they end up losing. Unless they have Protect on that Bronzong, in which case they actually... No, I think even then they lose. Do they? No. They choose Gyarados? Yeah, I win. Because I wake up here. I think I'm. It's, it's guaranteed. Yep, there it is. Good game. That's what you get for trading the Levitate, baby. Nice. That was... That was crazy. That was a crazy game, actually. That was a really cool game. Let's see if they're down for a best of three. Obviously, this is a random opponent. Unless they're in the chat. Unless this is someone in my chat right now. But I'm going to see if they're down for a best of three. Yeah, let's put the same rules. Ah, they're not down. They aren't down with it. That's fine. I'll take it, man. I'll take it. Let's continue with that. Ooh, this is, like, actually a great game for Manectric. I can pretty much always go, like, Manectric Gyarados here. Yeah, no, they have nothing for that. Um, Hitmontop is extremely important, I think. Maybe? Kind of? <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go with Tokus, actually. Tokus is really nice. And I think my last Mon, um, I can go Entei pretty safely. Entei's actually really heat here. We'll do that. I'm ready. I'm ready. Go full screen. There we go. By the way, if you want to support the channel, uh, you can subscribe on Twitch. You know, trying to reach 50 subscribers. That's the goal this month. A nice little Christmas gift for me. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I was checking Twitter. We can grow that. Okay, let's go. This is the game. This is the game. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? They're gonna tailwind here, and they they're gonna think they're smart for that. They're gonna think they're smart for that. But you know what? They're not smart. Check this out. Check this out. They got no clue. They got no clue what's going on. In fact, actually, they might be in the stream, so they might know exactly what's going on. the combine i simply do not care one bit <laughs> my waterfall just became neutral against the suicune we're in this this might be dumb but i kind of want to focus down this crowbat <laughs> I mean, that makes sense, right? Like, Suicune's just gonna set up. I can also Volt Switch here. I could Snarl. Uh, Snarl actually probably does it. In case it's Sash Crobat, and then I get a lot more value out of this turn. There's the Taunt. I'll take it. There's the Calm Mind. That's fine. Stop a little bit of setup here. My team's mostly physical attackers, so I'm cool with that. They are Sash, which is great, because I'm going to pick up a KO here with the Snarl. You know, 95% chance I do, but there we go. How do you have time to build a team in this game? Okay, so basically, power items. Power items are key. Power items are your best friend in this game. But also, uh, glitch dupe rare candies. That's actually, like, one of the best ways just to ensure you'll always be able to get a team ready in time. Because you can just have, like, 999 rare candies, and that gets rid of the tedious and least helpful part of grinding in this game. For some reason, they removed the fact that in Sword and Shield, you didn't have to be at level 50 for your team to be auto-set to level 50. But in this game, it does matter, which is really annoying. Um, so basically what you can do is you can EV train your team normally, just standard way, um, and then 
when you're done EV training and stuff, what you can do is go back and just rare candy them to level 50 and then you're good. And with legendaries, you just rare candy them to level 100, apply your bottle caps and you're good. It's really just the rare candy duping that like saves you the most time in this game. Okay. I think I'm in this, to be honest. I think I'm really in this. Let me protect... The oh, I can't protect this turn. But the Tailwind's almost gone. Um, And I should just be able to Dazzling Gleam here. Maybe I go into... I, I definitely focus down this Togekiss, right? I'm gonna Ice Fang it, yeah. And I'm gonna go hard into NT. NT? Because that should be safe, right? I don't want to go hard to Manectric yet. Yeah, I'm going to go Entei. Yeah, there's still a dupe glitch in this, in this version. Yeah, like all the quality of life updates that they removed from this game is actually super dumb. Critical Head and Gyarados, figure that much, that's fine. Critical Head and Entei, that didn't really matter. Ice Beam. I tank that. Don't freeze. There we go. And that's within E-Speed range, so I no longer really have to worry about that. Um, I can go for Waterfall for damage on this guy. And yeah, I just lock into E-Speed here. It's probably mostly that sword and shield in this game were like built somewhat parallel and i think that's what it is like they probably made sword and shield in this game parallel to each other um so a lot of stuff just didn't carry over for some reason because it was a different development team so like had game freak made both t uh had made both games they probably would have carried over literally every quality of life update um but because they like outsourced it it might have been just a fact just the fact that like hey there are different teams working on different games, and they're like, there was some communication. This is all theoretical, by the way. I'm just speculating, but I'm assuming it's like there was some communication, but not as much as was necessary to get everything in both games, you know? Obviously, I would have loved it if they kept everything, but whatever. I still prefer this game for competitive battling. Uh, it's just the grindy aspect of the whole thing is what really drags it down. How's it going? Typo, it's going great. I've been playing a couple of really awesome games tonight. This is the second one so far, uh, but Manectric has just been carrying the games. And that should make it so I live pretty much everything. It's called an Entei. Beautiful. Alright. Um, I think I just double the Suicune to guarantee my win. Nah, I just snarl. I just snarl here. Nah, I, I need to get rid of this thing. I'll Volt Switch and Extreme Speed. They made Sword and Shield with Competitive as the focus, and they made this one with a casual audience. I think that's probably true. And also, Typo, thanks for the sub, man. Welcome back to the Boosted Boys. And yeah, I win this with Tokus. Rentals made life easy. Oh my god, rentals were so great. I miss rentals. Oh, they are rest. They are rest, but unfortunately, I am crit kiss. I simply do not care. I simply do not care about rest, because I'm just going to bypass it with Dazzling Gleam every single time, dude. Literally every single time. Um, And there's no reason to switch out with Entei. It's literally the same damage. Yeah, I don't have a stronger move. I, get, I could go Stone Edge, but Extreme Speed's the most consistent damage I have. Nice. They go for Ice Beam. Doesn't do that much. No Freeze. Nice. Crit. Nice. And that's pretty much a guaranteed KO next turn, even without the crit. I think. They're at, like, plus three, actually. So maybe if I get, like, a low roll... I probably won't. No, nah, that's a, that's game. Nice. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this is this is a good game. I'll be right back. Uh, I'm actually just gonna do best of ones tonight. I'm just gonna do best of ones tonight to get as many like different matches as I can for YouTube. Um, but I will be right back. I have to go use the bathroom. Thank you all 
so far for hanging out with me and I'll be right back. All right, yeah, this is a different team. Um, Manectric is pretty okay in this matchup. Obviously, we have to be really careful with like Ludicolo and Polipper. Um, I could, you can't pronounce Polipper wrong. Polipper? You can only just kind of enunciate it wrong. Polipper? Pelipper? Polipper? Blyper? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm going to go main Gyarados again. Main Gyarados is such a reliable lead for this team. Uh, we'll go top in the back is actually really nice versus this. And I think my last Mon, I could go Entei, I could go Garchomp. Um, I, versus Rain, I get a lot more mileage out of Entei, to be honest. Even though Entei is like weak to Rain, it's mainly just by virtue of Extreme Speed picking off a lot of KOs that you wouldn't expect. Let's do it. That's exactly what I expected as a lead. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, Mirror B, a little bit annoying. Cannot tell a lie. He's gonna fake out my, gonna fake out my guy. So what I can do here? I'm gonna go right into the top. And I'll take this opportunity to D-Dance. Because they should always be Tailwinding plus Fake Out. If they don't end up <laughs> faking out my uh, into my top slot right now, I'm be kind of annoyed. Yep, they have to protect the Pelipper, and that means they Tailwinded. They're also Life Orb, which is really great because it makes it a lot easier to get this chip. Alright, nice. Um, I can fake out the Pelipper and go for an Ice Fang and a Mirror B, and that's actually quite a bit of damage now. And did I just faint? I didn't mean to faint. Uh, yeah, fake out the Pelipper. Uh, and I forgot if they have a freaking fake out, not fake out, uh, Intimidate user, but Ice Fang's going to do a lot, and because they're going to probably attack with this Ludicolo, it also means that they're going to get uh, Life Orb chipped, which is awesome. And I'm super special defensive on my hit on top, so Energy Ball with a Life Orb, that's going to do a lot, but it should never KO. In fact, it does less than half, it means I can take a whole another one of those. And if I connect this, swing, nice. Okay. It's a little bit risky. It's a little bit risky. I'm gonna go out into my Entei though. They're within extreme speed range, which means I can protect here. It's a little bit risky. I really doubt they go for a water move into the Hitmon top when they can just as easily hurricane. E ball and don't scald. There we go. All right, don't confuse me either. That'd be phenomenal. Amazing, incredible, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, typically speaking, typically speaking, um, Pelipper or uh, Ludicolo don't really run protect. So because of that, I feel comfortable going for E speed, and I'm actually going to Dragon Dance here because it lets me outspeed the rest of their team outside of Tailwind. And even though I'm doing that at the cost of the Entei, the Entei in the Rain matchup is pretty much meant to just pick off that thing. Yeah. And if they confuse me, I'm Lumberry, so don't care. And now I still have an E-Speed monster who can't be flinched. So I should be able to pick off this Pelipper pretty easily. There's the Mammo. Ooh, I'm a little bit scared of the Mammo, to be honest. Um... Ice Fang can be super annoying. TBH. TBH. I think it's my best play. To, or not Ice Fang. Ice Shard can be kind of annoying. So I'm going to... Is it within range of two E-Speeds? I don't think so. I'm going to protect here. And I'm going to E-Speed the Donald Duck. Because that should only take two. Let's see if they Ice Shard. Yeah, that's within two. You go for the Ice Shard, phenomenal. 
Does they actually go for a Scald, which is actually amazing for me. Um, because on this turn, I can send out my, my Hitmontop and guarantee a KO on the Pelipper or whatever wants to come in. Yeah. I don't even have to um, Ice Fang from this range. Waterfall will do it, so I don't have to risk the... I don't have to risk the miss. I'm going to Waterfall here. They protect the Mammo. That's perfectly fine. Protect the Duck. That's honestly still fine. Actually, is that fine? Is that is that really fine? Am I dumb? Um, oh, I might lose because of that. I should have fainted. Dang it. Uh, I couldn't have risked that though, to be honest. Okay. Is that thing in range of close combat? Probably not. And whatever's in the back is really scary. I think I'm going to take my chances with this play. I should tank a hurricane. Let's see if there's Sash. Uh, the Protect kind of screams that they're focused Sash. They're not. Okay, that's amazing. Because I can get like a full reset on my stats here. And like I said, I am faster than this Pelipper at plus two. Because I'm jolly with a lot of speed investment. It really depends what's in the back. It's the Rotom. I... Ooh, this is going to come down to that Rotom spread. It's, it's going to be really dependent on that Rotom spread. Uh, but I think my safest play here is to go right into Manectric and KO this... KO this thing. How the game's been? Game's been really close and like really good. Manectric's just been carrying. Alright, crit definitely didn't matter there at plus two. There's the overheat. That's fine, because they're at minus two now. And I just end up winning with my Yeah, I went I end up winning with uh special defensive uh hit on top plus Plus Manectric. As long as I connect my Snarls. Or even if I don't, really. Because this turn, I literally just freaking fake out Snarl, and then Close Combat Snarl, and then Thunderbolt. Yeah, that's fine. It doesn't really change much. The play stays the same. Because they still have to work their way up from minus 2, and I'm going to send them back to minus 1. Probopass? Probopass is a really interesting Pokemon. I don't think it's great, but I think it has a little bit of a niche as like an Iron Defense Body Press user. Pretty much only because it's the only one. You know? It did decent damage. And this will send it into barrier range. And also, they're only at neutral. So, yeah. Effectively, versus my Hitmontop, they're at neutral, I mean. There's the berry. Tailwind's gone, which means I guarantee another Snarl and another Close Combat. Nice. Uh, so they need a crit to KO me. And even then, if they get the crit, I probably still win anyways. Unless they, like, double crit. Nice. That's game. That was a really close one. They played really well. Thoughts on Jump Bluff? Very underrated. Um... It's something I have my eye on. I don't think it's going to be meta-defining by any stretch of the word, uh, but I think it's going to be a really solid Pokemon overall, you know? I just think that, like, access to Chlorophyll plus Sleep Powder plus Rage Powder and all these, like, different tools, I'm pretty sure it's still against Strength Sap as well. Uh, just make it really cool, you know?